Okay, we're out here at the shop. I'm building, I'm painting this thing. It's a backrest. Backrest for a laptop. Uh, I'll explain that in a minute when we get in the truck. Uh, gonna catch you up on what I've been doing the last several days. Uh, kind of got a lot of stuff done. A lot of the little nitpicky things that aren't really that interesting to watch, you know, and video and whatever. But I got the desk completely built, got it done. Uh, got it in the truck, it's mounted and done. Um, got the laptop sitting on it now. Uh, people uh, in the videos, uh, in, the, in the comments have asked me, says, why do you have a laptop sitting over there? It, you know, you, you can't use that while you're driving down the road, you know? And I'm like, yeah, I can. <laughs> and I can't sit there and type on it and watch movies on it or anything, but I use it for my map, okay? I used to use an old Rand McNally Road Atlas map and I'd set it on the passenger seat and every time I'd hit the brakes, that thing was sliding off onto the floor. And it's just aggravating. I hated that damn thing. And uh, so years ago, uh, I started getting laptops and everything, and I come across a software program for a, a mapping software program uh, from DeLorme, DeLorme Maps. Um, they don't make it anymore. People have asked me what kind of software I use for that, and they don't make it anymore. I use that laptop for basically a GPS, okay? and uh it's no different oh you got your laptop out you're looking at the laptop okay what's the difference between looking at a laptop and looking at that gps screen nothing not a damn thing oh you can't do that because your hands aren't on the steering wheel you ever heard about changing the radio you know i mean people get i can do more than one thing at one time people and oh you wrecked your truck because you no i spilled coffee on my crotch <laughs> there's a difference okay um Anyway, <laughs> that's my little rant. Um, anyway, I got my desk over there to put my laptop on because nobody sits in the passenger seat. Also, another thing people ask, you took the passenger seat out, where's Pam gonna sit? Pam doesn't sit in there. Nobody sits in that passenger seat, nobody. I, mean, I go by myself out on the road, okay? So I don't need a passenger seat over there. Um, and that desk is so much more handy. Oh, the drawers, every, you know, I got all kinds of stuff right there within arm's reach I can grab at any time where it just, it's, it's convenient. Very, very convenient to have that desk over there. So anyway, I've got the desk in, the laptop will go on top of it. Uh, I've got the, uh, around the shifter on, on the wood floor, around the shifter, I made a little framework that goes around the boot, okay? Kind of finishes that up, makes that look nice. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, I got the, uh, the battery. People was asking me about, you know, because I, I kind of left that hanging, didn't I? The, uh, the battery, <clears throat> the, the trucks, these, uh, these rigs on a Peterbilt, most trucks have a, a seat, the batteries are down in this step down in here, okay? And that's the four starter batteries. They're, they're class 31 starter batteries, and they start the main engine. And on my burgundy truck, that's all I had was those four batteries. And so when I'm watching TV, it's using electricity from those batteries. So sometimes it's hap it happened a couple times where I'd wake up or in the morning and I'd get ready to go somewhere or start the truck up and the, the truck wouldn't start. Well, let me see here, let's flip this around. There we go. So anyway, the batteries, the, the truck wouldn't start. So I'd have to start the generator because it's a smaller engine. Those batteries would start that, let it charge up. Then I can start the main engine. And that's really hard on starter batteries to discharge them like that and charge them back up and discharge them. Uh, they're not designed for that. They're, they're designed to be kept at a high charge and be used for a real short period of time, high amperage, start the main engine and then not use them. On the burgundy truck, that's all there was, okay? On this truck, I called the ARI and asked him, I says, none of the stuff in my sleeper works and I can't figure out why. He says, well, did you check your house battery? What house battery? He says, there's a house battery in there somewhere. It wasn't on my other truck. He goes, that's an option. Your other truck probably just didn't have that. Oh, well, where would it be? And he says, a lot of times we put it under the passenger step. Well, sure enough, <laughs> well, enough, and there it is. Well, the battery was completely dead. It was just, it was doornail dead. And uh, 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 sorry about the lighting situation, people. I don't have any, I uh, don't have much light out here today. It's overcast and rainy and I don't have a lot of light. So anyway, um, so he sits there and he says, yeah, they got the, uh, got the house battery. So I looked for it and found it, took it down to Napa. They tested it and it was, it wouldn't even turn the, the tester on. It was so dead, the tester wouldn't even turn on. 
So we uh, <clears throat> ordered another one. Next day it came in. And I bought, bought a, uh, it's an AGM battery, and I stuck it in there, and voila, everything starts working. Okay, all the lights, well, most of the lights started working. Some of the lights, actually only a few of the lights, <laughs> only a few of the lights started working. Uh, like these one, two, three, four, they're on this switch right here, okay? Only one of them worked. The other three didn't work, and I couldn't figure out why. So I pull them out, and there's no bulb in them. Somebody had snatched all the bulbs out of this thing. So there's two, four, there's six, six uh, puck lights in the ceiling. One of those worked. The other five didn't have bulbs in them. I bought these little LED bulbs and stuck them in there. And oh, what do you know? Everything works now. So all the all the uh, overhead lights work. The pump for the water works. The microwave, when the generator's running, microwave works. The refrigerator works now. Everything it just duh. Get a little bit of electricity and everything will work. <laughs> I just didn't know about that battery. I didn't, you know, the, like I said, the previous truck didn't have that, so I didn't know to look for it, okay? I just thought it was an empty toolbox. So, anyway, so everything's working. Uh, got the desk in, got that little framework around the boot. Uh, oh, got the door, the door latch on the back. This latch wasn't working. It was broke inside, so I bought a new one of those. I got it. I called uh, ARI when I was asking him about the battery. I asked him about that, too, and he says, we're having a hard time getting those because of COVID. Everything's COVID's fault. So anyway, uh, he says, we can't, we've got a very few of them. We need them for our new, new, new uh, repairs or new, new builds. He says, you could probably find one at an RV store. Oh, okay. So I looked around. I didn't go to that. I went to Amazon and looked. Sure enough, there was one on Amazon. So I bought it, installed it, boom. Um, back door works. Got a lock and a key and everything for it again. Uh, I got everything in the sleeper pretty much done. Um, go got the inverter. Um, this truck had a uh, 600 amp or 600 watt um, pure side inverter, and it was down here. And the thing is, that inverter is designed to run the TV and maybe the the sound system up here or whatever, uh, the DVR, you know that kind of stuff, um, DVD player, that that kind of stuff. That's what it's designed for. <clears throat> and I need it for a few other things. For one, the microwave, microwave convection oven. That will take, you know, I don't know, 1,500 watts probably. Um, the induction stove that, now remember the, the burgundy truck had a stove built in. This one doesn't have a built-in stove. So I'm just going to use this uh, induction stove and just plug it into the, the wall here. Some of these outlets, this outlet, that outlet, which is up in the top up here, this outlet, which is for the TV, um, that's about the only thing that induction stove or the, in, uh, the inverter works. Okay. The other outlets, there's one here and there's one down here. Those work off of the generator. So the generator has to be working for those two to work. All right. <clears throat> now I get up in the morning and I go to get, uh, make some breakfast. Let's say just, just something simple, like some oatmeal. When I need to heat some water up for oatmeal. Uh, coffee okay so i can run a coffee pot i can't run a 1200 watt coffee pot off of a 600 watt inverter so i put a 2000 watt uh pure sine wave inverter in there to run my coffee pot and to run this induction stove that'll run the battery down a bit yes but i'm getting ready to start the truck and go truck all day long and it'll all charge it back up okay um so that's why i put a bigger inverter to run that to run to run the inverter uh, the and in, Put a bigger inverter in to run the induction stove, the coffee pot, and the microwave. Now the microwave is still plugged into an outlet back inside for the uh, the generator. I'm going to unplug it and run a cord down and plug it into here, and that way this will run off the battery also. Okay, sounds like I'm going to use a whole lot of stuff on battery. I'm not going to use all of them at the same time, of course, and I can't use all of them at the same time. So one at a time, I'll make a pot of coffee while after that gets done pot, uh, brewing. I will uh, heat some water up for, for you know, for uh, oatmeal or something or whatever. Um, and then later in the evening, um, after I've driven all day, I can use the microwave to cook something or, or warm leftovers up or whatever. So I wanted a much bigger inverter. So I went from a 600, 600 watt uh, inverter to a 2000 watt inverter. So that will solve all those problems. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, oh, the thing here on the side let's go back outside here um 
your porta potty inside the uh, inside the shower right there. There's a porta potty down here, and it runs off of a um, not runs off of it. It it uh, the porta potty goes into a cassette toilet. Inside this door, you open this door up, and there's a cassette toilet in here. And you pull that out and take it off and empty your your uh, stuff. <laughs> Anyway, I've only got one key for this, and I tried to put it, and it won't unlock, and I can't get to it. Well, I don't really need the toilet, because I don't use the toilet in these trucks. I run in the truck stop and use the toilet. But right about right in here, there's the garden hose for filling up the water tank. So I need access to this door, all right? And that lock won't come unlocked. So I, I called and around and asked, and uh, ARI says that's a Peterbilt uh, lock. So I called Peterbilt, and they says, no, that's not ours, that's somebody else's. So I called ARI back and got a different person. They go, oh no, that's, that's one of ours. So they're sending me one of these locks. So I'm gonna have a fun time. I'm gonna have to drill that out and get that to get this open so on the back of the door I can access the lock and put a new lock in. And I'll have new keys and a brand new lock and that should work better now. So, so that's one of the few things I have. I got the, the TV, the, the, the CB, the TV, the, the door lock on the, uh, the, the toilet box. Um, what else? Um, oh, paint. Oh, this, this right here. This ugly, ugly yellow. Yeah, I, I want to get rid of that so bad. I hate that yellow. It's, it's, to me, it's not a very pretty truck, you know. So, um, turn this off. So what I think I'm going to do, where is the button? Here it is. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to go there. Once I get the tags and everything from Choice, uh, I'm, I'm still waiting on the permits and tags and all that kind of stuff from them. She's going to put a packet together. It's going to be a box full of stuff. She's going to send it down. It's going to be the permit book, the, uh, um, uh, the, the electronic log device that I have to put in, you know, behind the dash. Um, it's going to have uh, the license plates and all that kind of stuff. She's going to put a box together and send it to me. I was kind of hoping I'd have it already, but she, she got sick a few days ago or last week. Uh, she went and got her COVID shot, and the second COVID shot made her sick. So uh, she'd, already, she'd already had COVID back in November. Her and her husband got sick. She had COVID back in November. And then here last month, she decided to go down and get a COVID shot. Didn't quite understand why she was going to do that because she's already got the COVID antibodies in her body but anyway she went and got the first shot no problem the second shot made her sick for about three days so yeah <laughs> hey stan you gonna go get a covid shot hell no uh <laughs> i don't want anything to do with that damn thing so anyway um i'm waiting on that stuff to show once that shows up i can put the tags on be legal to drive down the road i'm going to run it up to fort worth to this uh um, vinyl company that i used to use and uh probably cut out my own letters for for the the doors and everything and I'm going to talk about getting covering that yellow up with maybe blue or something, uh, kind of like a, a a vehicle wrap, you know, something like that. Um, I'll tell you what, if anybody's good at that kind of stuff, got a good eye and good artisticness to them, um, you can go back on previous videos or actually here, I'll just show you a picture right here of this truck. Okay, take this and download it or, or screenshot it or whatever you need to do, and come up with some graphics or some kind of design or something like that. I love blue. I love this, uh, that sovereign blue. Amer uh, uh, Kenworth has a, a color called sovereign blue and I love that color. It's the color of my old trucks. Um, so I'm, if you guys can come up with some different designs and everything, I'd sure appreciate it, you know, and just, you know, see, see you know, um, that way you have bragging rights to say, hey, I designed Stan's truck. <laughs> so his truck, his paint job. So anyway, I would repaint the whole truck, but that's probably a twelve, fifteen thousand dollar project. So I think I'm going to wait on that. Uh, it doesn't need to be repainted. The, the, the paint's in pretty good shape on it all the way around. It's just I don't like the color. So let's change the color maybe and uh, we'll, uh, work from there. But so anyway, um, I was trying to think anything else I'm missing. Um, let's see, desk, frame around the boot, CB, TV inverter, battery, generator, all that shit works again. I think that's about it. So um, 
it's getting later in the day and the sun's starting to go down and oh the cows are all out here and we put the cows in the pasture in, in the yard here now so you know we got we got the bull and we got four four mama cows and four baby cows so yeah we got uh what's that nine nine head so and they're just loving this tall grass because out in the pasture it's kind of short and uh they've been nibbling on it quite a bit lately and this stuff here they're just it's like a banquet for them they're loving it so anyway we'll holler at you later and uh sorry about the lighting situation like i said it's 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 an overcast rainy day and i just don't have that many lights in the in the shop i got enough where i can walk around and not bump into things but it doesn't work very good for cameras so anyway apology for that uh hope you enjoyed uh, you kind of caught up uh, waiting for a couple things from you know waiting for choice waiting for that lock to come in waiting for i can drive this thing up to fort worth um just so yeah um getting most of my stuff done oh one of the other things one of the very last things i'm going to do before i back out and pull out on the road 